Why is anger such an ongoing problem for so many of us that we get caught in it and it just keeps on going? In fact, I had students tell me recently that as they're going through this process of transforming their mind and their emotions, one of the things that they realize always is that the anger just exp is explosive. It actually just happens and they almost think that they have no control of it. And here's the worst thing about anger. Anger, it shows up in your behavior. Anger shows up in your facial expressions. When we get caught in the constant flow of anger, it actually interrupts the quality of your life, the one experiencing the anger. When you feel that anger, it will just become rage if you fuel it. Now, here's the key to understanding it. You know, as I train my students in the science of the nafs psychology approach to diffusing it, one of the things that they've got to realize, and you have to understand that Allah says, you know, talking about the anger, um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Allah extinguishes or does away with the anger of their hearts. And so this is telling us very explicitly where the anger comes from. I want you to think about this. Like the anger, it comes from the state of your heart. The anger is a state of your mind. And as I take my students through a process of therapy and coaching to really untangle all of the mental and emotional problems that they get caught up in, one of the first things they have to realize, and this is why I'm sharing this with you, you've got to realize that your anger it is coming from inside. Most of us, we think that it's people outside of us. We think that it's someone else's fault. And the minute you give away the control of your emotions to someone else and their behavior and what they're doing, what's going to happen is that you're not going to be able to diffuse it. And diffusing emotion is the process of actually changing your emotions. This is the science of the enough psychology. This is the process that we go through. So what do we change? This is the key. What do you change? You don't change your intellectual reasoning because your intellectual reasoning is actually telling you that it's her fault, it's his fault. It's because of what they've done. It's because of the way my life is and you know, I can't control it. The minute you give up control of your mind, by giving up control of your emotions and you give it to someone else by saying it's their fault. Meaning that only if they stop doing what they're doing will you feel better. And the problem with that is that we never actually get to feel better. Now here's how it began. I want you to think about this. Anger as it relates to your life, whether it's periodic, meaning that it just explosively happens when someone behaves a certain way when you can't handle it anymore or if it is lingering as it is with most people. What happens with most people is that it's lingering beneath the surface and it feels like resentment. It feels like frustration and much of the time when I'm taking my students through to try and diffuse this, they're in denial about the fact that they've even got it, right? And this is where the whole narcissism um claim comes from. Everyone is focused on blame. Even the experts who are forever throwing constant tags and names and it's it, this term narcissism has become abusive. It's like if you want to abuse someone, call them a narcissist. The minute you do that, what you're doing is that you lose your ability to actually control your resentment. You lose your ability because now for you to change what you're feeling, you have to have someone else change. And that is so disempowering. It's the most, it's the worst way to try and solve your anger management problems. It's the worst way because you always, you always and forever need someone else to change or your circumstances to change. Or, you know, your perceived ideas of the world have to become reality. And when they're not the way that you envisage them to be, then you're forever angry, resentful and frustrated. And so if you want to solve this problem, you really have to understand it is coming from the heart. This is what Allah tells us. It comes from the heart. So the thing is, I want you to think about this. If you want to change the state of your emotions, like you have to change the state of your heart. And when you change the state of your heart, what's going to happen is that it's going to impact your behaviors. It's going to impact the way that you communicate with people. It's going to get rid of that frown on your face, or it's going to get rid of that 
cold look when you want to disconnect from people because you're frustrated you're feeling resentful about you know what they're not doing and what they should be doing and as for as long as you're caught up in the mental um, cycle of what people should be doing how the world should be then you're forever in a place of disempowerment i want to share the most important step in actually cutting loose from your anxiety from cutting loose from your uh, distress all of that emotional stress that you feel as a result of the anger because what happens when we feel anger very often i have my students tell me that um, they couldn't help it you know if if only um, their child would stop talking the way that they, they're so disrespectful or my husband is you know not taking care of his responsibilities he shouldn't he be doing this and shouldn't does isn't it my islamic right that he should be X, Y, Z, and you fill in the gap. And the minute we get into that, what happens is that we are now waiting for change outside of us. So I want you to stop waiting for change outside of you. I want you to focus on this. If there's one thing that you could do to help yourself, it is to change the state of your mind. Your mind is in control of your emotions. Emotional experience, we all experience it through our own mind. And I want you to just ask yourself the question. You know when you feel angry, like, when you feel that rage um, almost uh, spitting out of your mouth when you're trying to express yourself and when you're trying to prevent um, whatever you're trying to stop people from doing, like when you're trying to do that, like do you feel it in your body? Because the reality is like you know that you're feeling it in your body. And as you know, as I take through any of my students through a process of therapy, um, what they know for sure is that they are the ones feeling it. They're the ones feeling it. And, you know, I want you just to test this. It's a litmus test. Like, next time you feel it, just stop and ask yourself, where am I feeling it in my body? Where am I feeling it? And the likelihood is maybe you're getting choked up from the overwhelm of, of this emotion. Maybe you're feeling it in your gut. There's this real churning and it makes you feel something that you don't like. And when you feel that, then you go into your mind about what they should be doing, how they could be acting, what they shouldn't have said. And when we do this and we incessantly think these thoughts, and it all comes back down to the incessant negative thoughts. When you incessantly think these thoughts, what's going to happen is that you're going to feel the the welling up of that emotion and as it comes on you you're going to try and contain it and for most of us that's what we do we contain it and this is where the resentment comes from because when you contain it it's like the resentment is under the surface it's it's trying to surface but you're not letting it because of course you don't want to speak out of turn you don't want to react in the way that's going to create bad results you don't want to be in conflict who likes conflict none of us but some people when they experience conflict they want to protect themselves so they run straight into it they run straight into conflict and they get defensive and their form of defense is offensive and so they say you know like they say awful things they try to prevent themselves from feeling hurt and as a result they lash out and it's a defensive mechanism although it looks offensive but what is it being driven by it's been driven by the incessant negative thoughts and the emotions that it evokes and so what's so important is that we process not your emotions because your emotions when you're processing you hear people talking about process the emotion and when you're processing the emotion, what you're actually doing is that you're indulging in the emotion, right? You're sitting in the emotion, indulging in it. And what it does is that it actually moves you to action. And the action that it moves you to is maybe foul language, maybe, um, a, you know, abusive commentary, you know, maybe sarcasm. Maybe it's just going totally silent. And disconnecting from people and having them feel as though you don't love them and when a parent does this to a child and does this over and over again what happens is that the child feels unloved feels the anger and the wrath of the parent and what tends to happen is that the child starts to now experience what you're experiencing a bit of resentment a bit of anxiety a bit of frustration and 
they will copy your behavior. They will copy your behavior because they only learn from us adults. So then they copy your behavior. And if you're finding that now the anger is spreading throughout the family, it's almost like a fire. It was lit in you and it just slowly, slowly, slowly spreads through the family. And the only way to quell this is to actually um, pour cold water on it. Like if you imagine, like uh, ima think about this as the metaphor, you, the fire is spreading through your house. What do you do? Do you sit there and fan the flames by incessantly thinking and you know having awful thoughts about each other? Or do you quell it by throwing cold water over it, right? Of course, we throw cold water over it. So how do you throw cold water over, you, over the state of your emotions? Like you have to change from a state of incessant negative thinking to you know really just break out of it as quickly as possible into a different frame of thinking it's a different state of mind and that's what it is really it's about going from negative to positive now in the moment you know that's very difficult to do so then what do you do in the sunnah of the prophet we're taught if you're standing sit down if you're sitting down lie down you know when i first heard about this like because obviously um, i'm trying to manage my own resentment and i'm trying to manage my own anger i don't want to have explosive moments in my relationships because i love the people in my family and i want to keep it that way but if you keep feeling it, what do you do? So in understanding this, I want you just to think about this. Like what you want to do is you want to change your physical state, right? Because just imagine this. You're really, really angry. You're really, really angry. Like having a rage attack, like uh, frustration, maybe not verbalizing it. Maybe you're not abusive, but it's inside of you and it's creating this awful physical environment inside of you it's making you feel sick making you feel ill what do you do when you are lying down just imagine this you're, you're lying down you're on your back you're looking up like you're not in conflict mode right you're not in conflict mode conflict mode is when you're standing up raring to go almost like ready set go in a race and you're about to charge that's conflict mode when you lie down that's like relaxation mode. So the change in physiology, it actually impacts you immediately. So if there's one thing you could do immediately to change or to stop the anger and the rage is change your physiology. I tell my students this all the time because, you know, it is the sunnah and, you know, sunnah is revelation and revelation tells us exactly how to solve the problem. Now, the problem is like you may want to engage in your negative incessant thoughts about the people, about your circumstances, about your life. But really what you want to do is you want to disengage from that and you want to change your physiology. The quicker you change your physiology, the quicker you get to stop the rage. You get to stop the conflict. The conflict doesn't even begin because you put it to bed, literally. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do that. That is the best way to do it. But if you can't do that and you're really struggling to do that, then one of the things that you could do immediately is you could just leave the scenario, leave that situation. Like if you're at home and you're having arguments with your spouse, then, you know, just politely end the conversation. Politely doesn't mean like giving each other like cut eye and like throwing stuff at each other and calling each other verbal um, you know, all the verbal diarrhea comes out, right? Like we know how that works. Everyone knows how anger and emotion works. But you don't want to do that, right? You want to quell it before that happens. So what do you do? Like you breathe, right? Breathing is the fastest way to actually process that emotion. One of the ways you could do that is to leave that room, go into another room. It's just like, you know, when a child is having a tantrum, what do we do? We take it, we want to take it out of the situation. So we take the child out of the room, we take them into another room and we help them to calm down. Like we distract the mind, give them an ice cream. I mean, don't give them an ice cream. That's just loads of sugar. But anyway, you give them something or you give yourself something else to think about. If you can't lie down and you're raging while you're lying down, then do that. Change your physiology because it will help you to change your mind. If you change your mind, then what will happen is that the emotion of anger and rage will start to subside. This is a really powerful method of processing the anger and resolve, resolving it on a temporary basis. Of course, this doesn't fix it forever, but if you practice this, like 
in the moment, it will help you just to quell the emotion for that moment. And this is a process that I take my coaches through, my therapists through. Like as I'm training therapists, like we're learning to diffuse inf- diffuse the emotions. But the thing is, like what we need to do is we need to master the mind in order to make it per- permanent. Like making it permanent is mastery of the mind. This is the most fundamental skill that any human being can have. Like it's not just about anger, but if you could control your emotions, like your life would be a different, totally different result. It would be the kind of result that you want. Because if you could change your emotions at will, like what would happen? You would create the life that you want. And inshallah, I'm going to leave you on that. Jazakum ahead. Hey guys, thanks for listening in on this podcast. If you are ready to up-level your mind, emotions and relationships using a Quranic solution, you're going to love this podcast and what we are going to be sharing over the coming episodes. This is the most fundamental training that you're going to go through in your life. You can use it to transform your life, your mental and emotional health, your relationships, how you parent, how you are in your marriage and truly your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are loving this and you want more of it, click subscribe. Or if you want one of our free trainings, go to themuslimlifecoach.org and sign up for the free training. You're going to love it. I'll see you on the inside. Jazakum ahead.